hello welcome back yes we are getting somewhere my friend this is just a summary of what we have learned so far um, in this understanding git and uh, github uh, git and github repositories um, so far we have seen the conceptual uh, you know aspect of git and github conceptually we have looked at what um, git is as being a program and github as being a remote storage or host with git and git repositories as a local uh, folder with git in it and then we took a look at uh, github repository as being a, a remote folder with git in it you know <laughs> so that's why i said you can open the heaven of technology now with git and that is true my friend because of the dynamism of the git program so we have looked at uh, basically uh, the difference between uh, git and github and as we have seen previously uh, Git is actually a program that creates repository locally in our machine and GitHub is a web server or a host that hosts Git repositories remotely uh, over the internet for sharing uh, or for collaborating with others or for keeping your backup, you know, the backup of your, uh, your project. And uh, we have also seen the you know the similarities between them you know git and github repositories we will need both of them for uh, controlling the version of our work you know as we do our projects you know we need git program to allow us to create repositories and we need github so that we can be able to share our projects our source code with others over the internet and uh, we have also seen uh, the architecture. I call this the architecture of uh, the ordinary folder, Git, Git repo, GitHub, and GitHub repository. So as you can see from this architecture, I came up with this architecture just to kind of like um, create a mental picture at the back of our mind so that we can understand Git well. Uh, this is where, where I'm wiggling the, the cursor here. This is like the folder in our local machine. And the folder in local machine can be without or with Git. So at the moment, it is without Git. So if you need Git, you need to go to the website, download the Git program there after which you will create the Git repository using the Git program because you cannot create repository without uh, having Git program running in, the, in our system. So this folder can be turned to a Git repo, Git repository folder, meaning we initialize Git in this folder in order to make it a Git repository. It's like you know the initialization is like opening the door opening the door of the folder to allow git program to jump in so that we have our git repository so once we have our git repository we can now uh, link it to the github to create a github repository and then push what we have locally from our machine to the github uh, repository or we can go to the internet to the github and create a github repository there and then clone it to our local machine work on a folder work on the folder on the program that we might be sharing with others and then after that you just push it back you know you just commit uh send it back to the to the github to keep the copy there so we have decided to break this architecture down you know to kind of like understand each of the components of the architecture one by one so as you can see this is our local machine here and that 
side there symbolize the internet side outside our house and that small car <laughs> is a small lorry i just use that to mimic uh, uh the idea that git program is like the driver of everything we need if you want to control our version so from our local machine you can go to the internet and um, try to download a git program and yes you can see the local machine initially uh, stays without git but after loading after uh, downloading git program from the internet then we will have um, some sort of uh, git running on the local machine at this time we have git with the local in inside our local machine and uh, we haven't got any git repository yet so to get git uh, to have git repository we need to create it uh, using git in it is so you need to initialize git you need to open the door for git to enter into that file or folder i mean not file inside the folder because we obviously need git to control the version of our file so um when you use git in it you create uh, what is known as git repository then so the git repository now will be in our computer and once you have git repository that means we can be able to track anything that we do with our files inside that git repository folder from the other side on the internet we have broken this site you know to be our github and github as you know is the host or web server on the internet you know to host uh, the git repositories so you can also create git repositories on the github on the internet so after creating git repository you can now push what we have uh, locally on our git repository to the github repository sorry this is a github repository is created from the github so we can also uh, push the changes push everything that we want to be kept in the github repository uh, from the local repository as you can see sometimes uh, we may not have a, a repository uh, like uh, locally so you can clone github repository on the local machine work on it and then push it back to the to the github so this is our github is mainly used for collaboration and uh, you know for project management basically and to control the version of our files so this is the broken architecture that we have seen previously to understand each and every components you know in the previous architecture you know we had this file there without git and then we we decided to create repository with git and then uh, we created github repository on our local machine by pointing it to our um, uh, repository on the internet and uh, also um, I pointed out in the previous video that you know without git repository this folder here cannot do anything in terms of uh, checking or controlling the version of our files so we need git repository in order to be able to do um, any version a meaningful version control so without git we cannot control or create git repository we need git to create git repository in order to control our version that's the meaning of that red bar there well and uh yeah we also looked at uh, something which was not explicitly defined, but I would like to expose it here. And that's what I call the dynamic environment of Git and GitHub, or the dynamism of Git, if you like. So as you can see that um, um, the um, this, this big oval there is <laughs> like a circle that oval is telling us that uh, we have downloaded git and git is now in our computer and we can be able to use git to create repository and then put it back to github you know to create github repository there so this is like a global uh, aspect global environment where we 
you know we do get from anywhere we do get from our local machine and then we go to the internet we can download get a program we can get the updates you know this global environment is there you know so it's it's, it's represented by this big oval you are seeing on the screen however we may also have git installed on our machine and decide just to use git locally you know so we can create a local repository just for our private program projects that we are not sharing it with others you know we, we, we may decide just to you know to, to, to use git just by ourselves in our machine could be for training purposes or for any other program that you may be working on and uh, at the same time you may go to the github and create a github repository there and even do coding on the github without actually having everything on the local machine you can have everything do everything from the github and sharing share it with others because from the github you can make your github repository a a public or private repository as well that means you can publicly share your work with others or privately you just do your coding on your github uh, github account whereas at the same time you can decide to you know to to clone the github repository on your local machine or if you have your github repository i mean git repository on your local machine you can link it to your github so that you have both environment and work on them at the same time which means that when you do a work or write a program on your git repository locally you just need to push it to the linked github repository and you know in that way you will have two copies of your work at the same time you will have the local repository as well as the github repository and that's the environment which most people like because you will not lose everything when you when everything gets lost from um, uh, from the local repository you will still have what is there in the github repository and you can just clone it on your local machine next time if you want work on it and then uh, push it back to the github repository so this is the zone that we really need but as you can see git provides us with a dynamic environment where we can decide to work globally with others locally without others and working con in concurrency with others at the same time or you can even decide to be on the github environment alone which is symbolized by this red circle here the green circle is the mix between uh, the both world of local and global or remote repository and this yellow one is just you know local repository on your local machine so that is what i need you to take from this video the dynamism of git now when it comes to implementation of what we have seen we have downloaded git on our computer and we have created a git repository locally as you can see this is our git repository there and also we created a github account and then uh, created a github repository as well so now what we're going to see next is to link the local repository and the github repository so that we can be able to you know to work on the repositories on the local machine and then share it with uh, others on the github you know so that we have a github repositories as well to to have the um the repositories you know on both side of the world <laughs> if you like so this paradigm of operation in the git and the github environment is very crucial so yeah we have implemented this bit already and our main target is to be able to configure the working environment staging uh, be able to understand the revision or reviewing you know how to revise the work we have done and then 
committing the work we have done, creating branches, and doing other things, which I term it, I call it uh, scalability. And then, you know, the basic sharing of our work with others, and that is networking and collaboration. And then uh, trying to be as, you know, as attentive as possible by, you know, being connected with get always to get, get help, you know, get help, help, you know, and support. There's a lot of support there that Git uh, has for us, so don't be left out. And the, the three scopes, you know, the three scopes of Git, you need to understand that uh, we have the system level, the global level, and the local level. The system level is actually the actual Git environment, the entire Git, everything will be looked at. Remember when we... We look at the global, um, the global, um, this global thing. This you could look at this as the system level because at this level you can see everything about Git. Although, when you do things locally, uh, you can also be able to override what is there at the system level and the global level. So whatever you do globally, I mean globally and locally, will definitely automatically be under the system level so i'm going to see i'm going to check um in the previous in the next video i'm going to demonstrate the scopes uh, so that you can see clearly what it means to be in a system a global and local scope and uh, these modes of operation that's the target we want to uh, to get at you know in order to understand what we are doing so that at the end of the course my friend I want you to be able to get hold of this paradigm at the back of your mind in order to crown yourself a git expert so remember the, I'm doing this you know just to give you a basic foundation which is very crucial in software development um, software engineering and the target is for you to understand all those modes and the scopes of Git operation. You know, to know Git in and out. I want you to know Git in and out. So, let's go to the implementation right now uh, to do it practically. Um, um, you know, I'll see you in the next video for the practical aspect of this summary. So remember, we have already created our we have already created our Git repository, and we have our GitHub repository. So this is where we are going to begin from in the next video. So thank you for viewing. I hope uh, this video has been informative, and I'll see you in the next coming video. So thank you. Happy learning. So this is where we're going to see in the next video. So stay tuned, happy learning.